Good morning. To start our study of today, I would like to read out of the book of Revelation, chapter 15, verse 1. I saw in heaven another great and marvelous sign, seven angels with the seven last plagues, last because with them God's wrath is completed. There are two words in this verse that catch my attention. The first word is the word last. Whenever you use this word, it means that nothing else is going to take place after this. It's the last thing. And here I see that there are seven last plagues. It's almost as if my attention is drawn to the fact that this, the plagues, the pouring out of the plagues, is God's final works on planet earth before he comes in the clouds of heaven. Nothing else is going to take place after this. I also want you to notice that the other word that caught my attention was the word wrath. God's wrath is completed. Now in Revelation chapter 6, you will recall how that we went through different dispensations of time. And we came to the closing dispensation of time. It was the expectation of Christ coming in the clouds of heaven. And in verse 17, we read these words. For the great day of their wrath has come, and who can stand? So the second coming can also be referred to as the great day of wrath. So I want you to notice that when we talk about the seven plagues, the last plagues that are falling, the next event to take place after the last plagues is the day of wrath, the second coming. It's at this time that God is going to reward the decisions made on planet earth. Those who've accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior will receive eternal life. Those who have rejected Him will receive what they've um, chosen, and that is eternal death. Now, during the years of my presentation of the trumpets and the plagues, I found a lot of people coming to me and they are actually confusing the two events as if they are the same thing. Today I want to draw your attention to three things that clearly mark out the difference between the trumpets and the plagues. The first thing that I want to draw your attention to is that during the time of trumpet blowing we still have access to the sanctuary. What this means is that blood is still flowing. Sins can still be forgiven. You have an opportunity of going into the presence of God and you have an opportunity of accepting Christ as your Savior and you can confess your sin to Him and transfer your sin to Him and He will remove your sin from you. So during the time of the trumpets, it's very clear that you can still choose life. Whereas during the time of the plagues that are falling in the last hours of this world, I read there in Revelation chapter 15 verse 5 these words. After this I looked and in heaven the temple, that is the tabernacle of testimony, was opened. Out of the temple came the seven angels with the seven plagues. They were dressed in clean, shining linen and wore golden sashes around their chests. Then one of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven golden bowls filled with the wrath of God, who lives forever and ever. And the temple was filled with the smoke from the glory of God and from His power, that is, the only presence found in the sanctuary at this time, as revealed in the smoke, was God's presence. And then I read these words. And no one could enter the temple until the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. So we see that during the pouring of the plagues, access to the sanctuary is no longer allowed. You cannot go there and confess your sins. You have made your decision during the trumpet blowing time. 
The second thing that I want to draw your attention to is that during the trumpet blowing, decisions are still being made, so judgment is still in process. You are going to be weighed in the balance, and if not found wanting, you're going to receive the seal of God. If found wanting, you're going to not receive the, the seal of God. But as it says there in Revelation chapter 13, in verse 16, the devil is going to place on you his seal. Listen to this. He also forced everyone, small and great, rich and poor, and slave, to receive a mark on his right hand or on his forehead, so that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of his name. I want you to notice something here that's quite interesting, that the devil is going to force you to have a mark on your forehead or on your hand. Whereas the decision that you make voluntary in the time of trumpet blowing will be a decision that you can choose. God is not going to force you to choose. But so it's during the time of the trumpet blowing that you will receive God's seal. It's also interesting that in Revelation chapter 9 verse 4 we read these words. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any plant or tree, but only those people who did not have this, the seal of God in their foreheads. So during the, the blowing of the fifth trumpet, we find that there are people of God who have already received his seal. During the pouring of the plagues, it's very clear. If we look at Revelation chapter 14 verse 9, and I want to read this to you. The third angel followed them and said in a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on their forehead, or on the hand, he too will drink of the wine of God's fury, which has been poured full strength into the cup of his wrath. So the day of his wrath will come, and those who have not received the seal of God during the trumpet blowing will not receive the seal of God during the plagues. They will be found wanting. That's very clear. The third thing that I want to draw your attention to is that during the period of trumpet blowing, as we've discovered from our discussion on Revelation chapter 6, God extended a probationary time period to mankind to choose again life or death. This is clearly revealed in Revelation chapter 7. So we see that during the trumpet blowing, there is still access or there's still probation time given to man. But I want you to notice that during the plagues, as we discover in Revelation chapter 10, verse 6 and 7, let me read this to you. It says there, And he swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created the heavens and all that is in them, the earth and all that is in it, and the sea and all that is in it. And he said, there will be no more delay. The original language says that there will be no more time. So during the time of the plagues as it falls, no time will be granted to man any long, longer to have access to salvation. Time, the time of probation will be closed. There will be time no longer. Now to finish off the study today, I want to draw your attention to Revelation chapter 10 and I'm going to be reading verse 7. It says there, But in the days when the seventh angel is about to sound the, his trumpet, the mystery of God will be accomplished just as he announced it to his servants the prophets. We are going to discover what is this mystery that has been accomplished that takes place during the pouring, outpouring of the plagues. I want to advise you now that this will be the last study that I will be giving until the end of March. I am going away and as a result will not be able to share the things with you from the whiteboard. But I want to ask you if you will take the time 
to go and look at the messages that we've discovered in the trumpet blowing. And that you will go before God and seriously consider making your choice, accepting Christ, accepting eternal life. The reason why I'm asking you to do this, you will discover with me that when we look at the plagues, that the plagues are going to fall on those people who have not made a decision for Christ. So I appeal to you, dear friends, please, before the plagues pour out, make your decision for Christ. Until we talk again, God bless you.